Hello, everyone, and welcome back to a, uh, another episode in our series of violin practice demonstrations for Suzuki Book One. And today we are talking all about minuet number two. So we are moving right along through our minuets by J.S. Bach. And as always, we start learning the piece and we also start every one of our practice sessions by listening, listening, listening. So let's kick off this video by listening together to minuet number two. You can even listen twice, the first time with your eyes closed, just focusing on the melody, and the second time with your eyes open, open watching as I use my bow, as I use my fingers, and beginning to put together the mechanics of the violin with the beauty of the sound that we are producing. Here is a playthrough of minuet number two. So as always, you are encouraged to stop the video and rewind and listen as many times as you would like to during your listening session. But for now, let's continue on. And the very first thing we're going to talk about is how this piece is organized so that we can have a sense of how we are going to practice and learn it, because it is definitely one of the longest pieces that we've learned, but that won't be a problem as long as we structure our approach to practicing and really, really learning all of the notes and the melodies. So, as you can see by looking at the music, there are two main sections which are separated by a repeat sign. And the first section has what we might say are two phrases, and each of these phrases is eight measures long, and they come in pairs. Each phrase has a question and an answer. And so we're gonna learn each of these phrases individually. After that, we move on to the second section. And the second section is a little bit longer. It actually has three main phrases. And as always, each of those phrases is eight measures long. 
and the first section and the second phrase of that second half of the piece are new, but the third phrase is one that we have already learned. So that won't be any surprise. As you noticed, there is a repeat um, after the first section. There's also a repeat after the second section, uh, but you should discuss with your teacher whether or not you're going to do that one. Um, I do the first repeat, uh, but I don't do the second repeat, as you may have noticed from the recording. And so that is the general structure of our piece. It comes in two halves. The first half has two phrases, and the second half has three phrases. Each phrase is eight measures long and consists of a question and an answer. So with that in mind, let's begin learning this piece. And the very first thing that we're gonna do is practice some of the new skills which are introduced in the song. Things that we have never seen before or which we have only practiced in exercises. So the very first thing we are going to learn about is a new note, and that note is our D sharp, which is the high three on the A string. And that shows up in the second half of the piece. Let's just have a listen to the moment where it shows up so we know what we're talking about. Here it is, and again. So that's a new note, and uh, we don't have a sticker, probably not, where that note is gonna be, so let's learn how to find it. And the way that we're gonna practice it is by sliding our third finger around. So I'll come a little bit closer, and let's start off by putting all four fingers down on the fingerboard, first, second, third, and fourth, where they all usually go, and we have a loose, relaxed hand, and our third finger is right on uh, the sticker where it usually is, and our fourth finger is nicely curled and bent right where it belongs as well. And let's just practice sliding our third finger up and then slide that third finger down. You can even lift your first finger up if you need to. Mostly we're focused on the space in between our second and our fourth fingers. So here's our low third, and here's our high third, which comes right next to the fourth finger. Here's our low third, which comes right next to the second finger, and here's our high third. And we don't need to stress our hand out too much in this position, we're just learning where this third finger can go. Next to the second finger and next to the fourth finger. Now let's do our main exercise. And the main exercise we're gonna play is a little bit of a scale. So let's do our first finger. And then we're gonna do a low two. And then we're gonna slide up that two onto the sticker, which we know and then we're gonna play our low three, and then we're gonna slide that up. That's the high three, and now we have our fourth finger, which is right next to the high three. And if you can keep all four fingers down, that's great, but if they come up a little bit to help you reach around, that's also okay. Let's hear that again. And then we will go back and forth a few times. And then come down. And now what you'll notice is our fingers are learning a lot of notes. We have a low two, a high two, a low three, a high three, and our fourth finger. And as long as our hands are loose and flexible, we can move our fingers around and get to all of those notes. So let's hear that little scale one more time. And we'll 
will start off all of our practice sessions just by practicing that flexibility of our fingers. And our second and our third fingers are now able to use a low and a high version. Low and a high version. That's all we need to do for our exercise. And then we can actually practice the notes. And we'll do this very slowly. Our first finger. Then that high three that we talked about. And then the fourth finger. And then the third finger. And then the E string. Let's do that again. First finger. High three. Fourth finger. Third finger. Open E string. And here it is without um, any words. And we'll just do that a couple times at the start of our practice session. Um, and you will learn soon where it shows up in the piece. Okay, that was our first number, our first skill, which was the high three. Now let's move on to our second new skill. And the second new skill is indeed the opening notes of the piece, which are what we call a G major arpeggio. Let's have a listen to it before we start practicing. And then it happens again right away. Just like that. So hopefully at this point, we've actually been practicing our uh, G major arpeggio. And so it won't come as too much of a surprise to play it in our piece. But we definitely will need to practice being able to play it at the tempo of this minuet number two. So let's um, talk about how we practice our G major arpeggio. The very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to play it very slowly with big bows. So I have my third finger down. And actually, I start with just my third finger. It's independent third finger. Nothing else is down. And then keeping my finger there, I find my next note, which is the first finger on the A string. Keeping that finger down, my next note is the third finger. And then keeping that finger down, I have my second finger. Then I can lift my third finger. And then the first finger on the E string. And then we're done. Let's hear that all again. And when we play this, there's two things to keep in mind. The first thing to keep in mind is, as you noticed, I always get my next finger down before I lift up the previous finger. Here my first finger is ready to go, and then I lift my third finger. Here my third finger is ready to go, and then I lift my first finger. And this makes sure that our hand is staying nice and quiet and keeping a very beautiful structure. The second thing to keep in mind while we're playing this is that all of these notes uh, can ring if they're really, really in tune. So listen to your third finger. And when you pull your bow off, you'll know it's in tune because it rings so beautifully. The reason it rings so beautifully is because our violin has a G string. So when we play this G on the D string, our violin rings. 
The third finger on the A string also rings. And then the second finger on the E string also rings. And this is a really good way to know that you are playing the right notes, is you'll really start to hear your whole violin ring. Okay, once we've practiced that arpeggio really slowly, you can begin to play it a little bit faster. Instead of whole bows, we're just gonna do it in the upper half and we'll go a little bit faster. but still remembering everything that we practiced. Fingers preparing each other and beautiful ringing notes. And then we can even go a little bit faster. So that's the second um, kind of new skill that we are going to practice every day while we're learning this piece. And now let's talk about our final new skill um, the third new skill, which is the triplet pattern, uh, the triplet rhythm that occurs at the end of each section and also shows up in the middle of the second half, the second section. So let's have a listen for what that sounds like. And even though this is new, I've actually found that many students get the hang of it pretty quickly. The most important thing I would say is let's just sing this together at the start of all of our practice sessions. So we have this A and we can sing triplet bum bum bum. If your pitch is not great, like I'm not a very good singer, you can just sing the rhythm and you will go triplet one, two, three. And then we'll play it very slowly. And then a little bit faster. Eventually, it will sound like this. So the most important thing is just to sing that rhythm so we really know that we uh, have it in our ears. And once again, it's triplet one and one, two, three. Triplet half, half full long bow, something like that. And those are the three skills that we are going to introduce for the minuet number two. After we have discussed and are probably practicing those skills regularly, let's move on and begin learning this piece phrase by phrase. So here is all of phrase number one, which is the first eight measures of this piece. Let's have a listen together. You can go back and listen to that as many times as you need to. And probably you'll want to practice the first half of it, really learn that, and then practice the second half of it and really learn that. Um, but I won't play them independently. You'll go back and listen to this entire first phrase and really try to build it from there. Let's talk a little bit about uh, how to practice this first phrase. Well, the very first thing you notice is that this phrase does feature our arpeggio pattern. That's how it starts off. And we're gonna play that in the upper half. So make sure we're starting at the middle. And we play that arpeggio in the upper half. 
And the next thing you'll notice in terms of our fingers and the notes that we play is that in the second measure, we're going to be crossing two strings from the E string down to the D string. And we just really want to remember to bring our elbow to the correct elbow level so that we can get from the E string down to the G string. But if you've been practicing your arm levels and you feel very comfortable on each string, this should not come as too much of a surprise. Now, the main thing that I do want to talk about for this first phrase is how we use our bow. And the division of the bow is pretty important for making this phrase sound beautiful. So watch very closely and listen along as we go through each measure together. We start off in the upper half with our beautiful detache eighth notes. For these two notes, we have to save our bow and really, really try not to use too much bow because we want to be back in the middle to start our next arpeggio. The second time it happens, we're going to use more bow so that we can get to the frog and play beautiful long notes in the second half of this phrase. Full bows, then half bows, then full bows, then half bows, full bow, half bows, and now a long note where we really do have to save our bow again. One, two, three, because we're gonna start the next phrase with our arpeggio in the middle. So let's see that all again because it can be a little bit tricky, but learning how to organize your bow will really help the sound and the story that you're able to tell with your music. So our eighth notes are always, uh, our arpeggio is always in the upper half. And now we have to be careful and save our bow so we can do the next arpeggio. Now we can use more bow so we can play beautiful long legato notes. Each quarter note gets a full bow and each eighth note gets a half a bow. Now for this long note, I'm sorry to say we really need to save so that we can start again in the middle. And uh, that's the most important thing to focus on for this entire piece, actually, is the use of our bow division. And uh, one final thing I will say is that uh, this piece has a lot of low twos. So on our A string and our E string in this whole first phrase, we're using low twos. And for our low twos, when we put um, our third finger down, We just want to make sure that our second finger is not in the high two position because we're not going to play it there. So if you can get it into the low two position because your fingers are shaped that way, that's great. But otherwise, you just want to let it hover somewhere between your first and your third finger. The only thing you really don't want to do is put it down in a place where it's not going to go. That's just going to cause your fingers a little bit of stress. So on the uh, last couple measures of this phrase, we have a low two, and then a third finger. And we really just want to make sure that our second finger is not getting up into a place where it's just not doesn't want to be. So be careful of that. All right, uh, that was phrase one. Great job if you've learned it. Let's move on to phrase number two. And first, let's have a listen for phrase number two. Starts in the middle with a 
third finger on the D string, a G. As you're learning the second phrase, feel free to pause it and listen as many times as you need to. The phrase, as we've discussed, comes in two parts, sort of our question and then our answer, first half and second half of the phrase, and you will need to learn them both in order to play this full phrase. But it shouldn't be too much of a challenge because the first half of the phrase is exactly what we've already learned. So all of the same concepts apply there. Let's talk about the second half, which has a few tricky sections. So the first thing I wanna talk about is some of our fingering patterns. And right away, we actually have the same fourth finger and third finger pattern that we saw for minuet number one, where we have our third finger down, and then we reach across to get our fourth finger down, and then we can hop our third finger back to continue playing. So we've already practiced that in minuet number one, and we will need to apply it again here. The most important thing is to just make sure that our hand is super relaxed. We keep our third finger down while we find our fourth finger, and then we can lift it up and hop it over. Just like that. And also the same piece of advice that I offered in the last phrase. We're gonna have a low two here. So just make sure that your two, your second finger is not sitting on that high sticker because unfortunately we're not gonna be playing it there. So really make sure that finger is ready to go to its lower position. And uh, that's actually the only uh, tricky fingering part. One thing you might also notice is that in the final piece of this phrase, we have a low two and then a high two. So just don't be surprised but as long as you can listen and sing that melody, I'm sure your fingers will be able to find where they need to go. However, uh, the second piece of advice, as I mentioned before, is that we are really going to think about how we are using our bow to make sure we are creating a beautiful sound. So the uh, same idea applies as in the first phrase. We start in the upper half. and then we save, save. And then we're in the upper half for our arpeggio again. And now we can use more bow so we can play beautiful long legatos. And now everything here is full bows. Half, half, full bow. And that ends our second phrase. All right, we are moving right along to the third phrase, which occurs after the repeat sign. And with our third phrase, we are going to be starting off in the middle with a third finger. So let's have a listen to the third phrase together. just like that. And um, what you'll notice about this uh, second phrase is that, of course, it has a lot more of our eighth note detachés. 
So let's start off by just talking a little bit about um, how we're going to use our bow through this phrase number three. And just starting from the beginning, we're going to be playing a lot of it in the upper half. Save, save, so that we can do these eighth notes in the upper half again. And then save, save, and so we can do our eighth notes in the upper half. Now we can go, so we use our whole bow for this next couple notes. Just like that. So a lot of upper half, and then finally when we're going to do our long beautiful legatos, we can use our whole bow. Okay, the second thing that I want to talk about is some of our finger patterns. So first of all, of course, this phrase is where we have that high three that we saw before. High three. So don't be surprised when it shows up, but since we've been practicing it every day, it won't be too much um, of a shock. The second thing that I want to talk about is keeping a very, very loose hand. And the reason why is because we do need to be hopping our fingers around quite a bit. And you'll see that here. Hop it over. And then again, hop it back. Hop it over. And then hop it back. And then hop it over. So that first finger is really jumping back and forth between the A and the E string. And in order to do that, you really just need to make sure that your hand is totally, totally relaxed. And always when we are moving our fingers around independently, the most important thing is that our, our hand is relaxed. Otherwise, you know, A, we might not even be able to hop those fingers, but also it might really make our fingers hurt. So be kind to your hand and make sure you are relaxed and do it as slow as you need to in order to stay relaxed. Okay, that's all we have for phrase number three. Let's move on to phrase number four. And I'm actually going to start from uh, the measure before so that you can hear how it transitions in. Actually, I'll play those last measures again because we need to be saving this last note. It should end in the middle. And we'll talk about that quite soon. Okay, so what is our advice for this uh, fourth uh, phrase? Well, first of all, the notes are not going to be uh, too hard for us. They are really just a lot of downwards scales, but they are going to use some important figuring patterns that we have been talking about. So let's just play it a little bit together and pay attention to our fingers. We're starting off on the E string. And now we have a fourth finger that we really want to make sure our hand is loose and ready for. And as we've talked about, here we're gonna have a low two. So we really don't wanna put our second finger up there where it has been in the past um, because that's just gonna confuse us when we need to shift it down. So um, probably you want your finger hovering somewhere around here until it's gonna come down. I do put my first finger down to help my hand stay structured. So let's take a look at that. here. You can have your fourth, your third, and even your first down, but make sure your second finger 
does not think that it's going to the high place because it's going to the low place. On the D string, it is definitely going to the high place. And so there you can put it down. So that's the only part to be aware of for your fingers, but otherwise, if you've been playing your G major scales, this shouldn't be too much of a surprise. The main piece of advice that we are gonna be talking about is, as always, how we use our bow. And this section has a little bit of a tricky moment, so let's just talk about that together. Starting from the beginning, where uh, a measure before this phrase, We have big bows on our quarter notes. Everything is legato. Half bows on our eighth notes. Full bow. And then eighth notes. Then full bow. Then half bows. Full bow. Then half bows. Now here's where it gets a little tricky. Here on this last note, we actually want to save our bow so we can do a quick retake back to the frog. And then save our bow here because we're about to start our arpeggio again. So let's hear that second half of the phrase again and we'll talk about all of our bow division um, very carefully. So we're uh, gonna start maybe uh, at the up bow in the measure before. We save our bow so that we can retake. That might be a practice spot for you. You'll have to take a chance. Uh, you'll have to just play it and see. And if you do need to practice it, just do it a few times. And again. And again. bow circles at the frog. Very important to practice and uh, shows up here in this phrase. So now that that's all settled, let's move on to our fifth and final phrase, which I will play for you, but as you will see, it's not much of a surprise. We're starting in the middle with our third finger on the G, on the D string, which makes a G. That's our fifth and final phrase, and we actually don't need to talk about it because it's the same as the second phrase that we learned. So we've already learned this one. And once you put together all of these phrases, you will have learned the longest piece that you've learned so far, which is minuet number two. Good luck practicing, and I will see you for the next installment as we do our third minuet of these series. Good luck practicing.